Good morning, I'm showing nine o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Mike DeLucluse. I'm the president of the Lessman Instrument Company. I'd like to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for taking the pain out of portable flow measurement. Today's speaker is Tom Michalowski of Baker Hughes GE. Tom is going to talk about some of the latest innovations in portable ultrasonic flow meter technology that can help you reduce troubleshooting time and increase your trust in your measurements. In the next 45 minutes, we'll cover using ultrasonic flow for troubleshooting and diagnostics, some best practices for sensor mounting on standard and large pipes. Uh, or you're gonna see some updated tools for configuration and monitoring, uh, signal validation, how do you trust the numbers, and then we'll talk about some field proven applications and examples. Tom's been with Baker Hughes GE and Panometrics for more than 20 years where he currently serves as product manager for ultrasonic clamp-on and vortex flow meter products. He earned his bachelor's of science in chemical engineering from uh, Worcester Polytech Institute and his MBA from Bentley University's McCallum Graduate School of Business. We will be muting the phone lines. If you have any questions, there is a built-in question tool into GoToWebinar. Uh, please just type them into the tool and I will go ahead and get them started. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Tom. Thank you, Mike. Uh, let me get the presentation going here. Um, so, as Mike said, hey, hello, everybody. My name is Tom Michalowski, and I'm the product manager uh, for the uh, clamp on ultrasonic and vortex flow mirrors here with Baker Hughes, the GE company. Um, again, I've been with Baker Hughes. Uh, General Electric and Panamax for 20 years at this point with experience in application engineering and the flow measurement, gas measurement, and moisture measurement. Um, but uh, without further ado, let's begin. Ultrasound, it, it's used every day. Um, it is amazing to see how ultrasound is used every day. In nature, bats use ultrasound and echolocation to detect the location of insects and hunting. They create sounds and determine location by the reflection time delays and relative intensity. Uh, similar to bats, submarines use both passive and active sonar to determine location of objects. Um, ultrasound is used to image internal body parts, such as tendons, muscles, and internal organs, but is commonly known for viewing babies. Uh, Non-destructive testing uses ultrasound to inspect for flaws in materials, vibrations of, of material thickness, and as an alternative to radiography for inspected welded joints. Ultrasound is used in chemical processing for cleaning of jewelry, optics, dental equipment, and other electronic parts to generate microbubbles and cleaning solutions to remove undesired contamination. And then finally, you know, today we'll talk about ultrasound, how it's used to measure flow in pipes. So what is ultrasound? You know, before we go too far, let's start with the basics. You know, really, what is ultrasound? Ultrasound is a sound wave with a frequency greater than 20 kilohertz. From your chemistry and physics days, frequency is determined as the number of occurrences over a specific unit of time. We simply think of a wave with the number of cycles per second commonly referred to as hertz. As a reference point, the typical audio range is 20 to 200 to 20, to 20, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Sonic waves are zero to 20 hertz. Ultrasonic waves are above that 20 kilohertz level. When discussing ultrasound, an important side note is that different materials support different frequencies. Now, typically, a frequency of greater than one megahertz is used for solids. 250 kilohertz to five megahertz is used for liquids. And 20 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz are typically used for gases. You know, the final application of a specific frequency to media will depend on many factors such as acoustic attenuation or absorption. So how does it work? Now that we understand kind of ultrasound, how do we generate an ultrasonic wave for instrumentation? Well, we use a transducer. A transducer is made of a substance that will convert electric energy into a of energy or vice versa. When you want to transmit an ultrasonic signal, Electrical energy is applied to a crystal, which stresses the crystal. Once electrical energy is removed, the crystal relaxes and converts the energy into a sound wave. This is commonly referred to as the piezoelectric effect. 
The same effect can happen in the reverse direction in which the transducer absorbs the mechanical sound wave and converts it to electrical energy. Therefore, the transducer can act as both or either a transmitter, receiver, or both. Now that we understand ultrasound and how ultrasound is created, the next logical step is to see how it applies to flow meters and to flow measurement. There are several methods of ultrasonic flow measurement in the market today. Transit time is the most popular method for measuring flow with an ultrasonic flow meter. With a transit time flow meter, two transducers are mounted on opposite sides at an angle so that one transducer is upstream of the flow and the other transducer is downstream of the flow. The transducers act as a pair and both transmit and receive ultrasonic signals. However, when there is flow in the pipe, the signal from the downstream transducers will slow down as it go against the process fluid and up to the upstream transducer. The opposite occurs as the signal from the upstream transducers will speed up going with the process fluid to the downstream transducer. This time difference is proportional to velocity. Doppler was the original method for measuring flow with an ultrasonic flow meter and is typically only used in applications with high amounts of solids or gases in the liquid media. With a Doppler or Doppler shift meter, an ultrasonic signal is sent from a transducer and the signal bounces off of a sonically reflective material. Assuming that the material is traveling at the same speed as the fluid, the returning frequency will be different based on the velocity of the sonic reflective material. Correlation tag is the last method for measuring flow with an ultrasonic flow meter. With a correlation tag meter, two pairs of transducers are used, and the pair of transducers act exclusively as a transmitter and receiver to create a tag path. Each path detects the disturbance in the flow caused by the natural form vortices in the flow. By tracking the time it takes from each of the disturbances to get from one path to the second path, and knowing the distance between the two paths, the velocity can be calculated. Beyond the measurement techni techniques of transit time Doppler and correlation tag, ultrasonic flow meters can be applied by either wetted or clamp-on transducers. With wetted transducers, the transducer or transducer system directly touches the process fluid. With these systems, the transducers are typically installed with a meter body that matches the process piping, pipe schedule, and flange rating. Wetted transducers can be installed in a special situation with either a cold or hot tip kit as well. Clamp-on transducers are mounted to the outside of the pipe using a clamping fixture with a strapping mechanism. Also, as shown in the clamp-on trans, uh, transit time picture, transducers can be mounted on either the same or opposite sides. If the mounting on the same side of the pipe is shown, the signal bounces off the pipe wall and travels to the other transducer. In this picture, it would be considered a two-traverse installation, or commonly referred to as a V-mount. Since transit time ultrasonic meters are the most common in the industry today, it makes sense to dive a little deeper into this method. As discussed, transit time uses at least one pair of transducers mounted at an angle from each other to measure flow. With flow in the pipe, the time that it takes to travel from the downstream transducer to the upstream trans transducer, T up, will be greater than the time it takes to go from the upstream transducer to the downstream transducer, T down. The common analogy for transit time flow meter is a person canoeing on a river. It is faster and easier to paddle with the flow than going against the flow. Beyond precisely measuring the transit time, accurate placement of the transducer is critical to the velocity measurement. The path length from transducer face to transducer face and the axial length is just as important as the time measurement. Using transit time flow measurement has its advantages since it can measure zero flow. You know, with, with no flow, the transit time up will be the same as the transit time down. Also, the transit time measurement, the sound speed of the fluid is calculated and can be used for diagnostics and troubleshooting. Sound speed is the time a sound wave takes to propagate through the fluid. Is a natural property of any fluid and is most frequently a function of temperature. By knowing the fluid, the installation accuracy can be validated with sound speed. Also, the ultrasonic meter can be tracked and trended, trend a fluid sound speed for changes in process conditions or process media.
There are different types of ultrasonic flow meters on the market today. Uh, first, we have wetted or inline meters. Uh, we have high accuracy, you know, custody transfer allocation meters for either gas or liquid measurement. Uh, we also can have the ability for high temperature or extreme low temperature applications, such as a uh, furnace feed going into a delayed coker, as an example, with temperatures greater than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. For permanent clamp-on meters, uh, you obviously can have non-hazardous or hazardous meters. Uh, for example, you could be using them for dock loading applications where the media could be changing and it could be going, you know, upstream to loading to the dock or out to, out to the ship. Um, you could also have clamp-on meters for water measurements as part of a water or re as part of a uh, regional water measurement campaign. And then finally, you have clamp-on meters, uh, portable clamp-on meters. They can be either liquid or gas, and they're available for almost every application. So, why portable flow meters? You know, it's a common question that's asked. You know, why would I need a portable ultrasonic flow meter? Most of the time, it comes down to trust. You know, do you trust your flow measurement? It's a simple question, but not always easy to answer. So, really, what are your options? You know, you, you, you purchased a flow meter that's permanently installed, and you suddenly trust it for a good reason. You know, but, but are you sure? You know, it can be risky, you know, if you don't trust the measurement, and you know, it could affect your, you know, process optimization and possibly the safety of your team. You know, with the latest generation of flow meters, you know, most have diagnostics that will tell you about the health of the meter. However, is your meter's health diagnostics correct, and are you sure it was installed correctly to the manufacturer's recommendation? You could send the meter for verification. You know, shipping the flow meter back to the manufacturer or to an independent calibration facility will validate, you know, the flow meter's performance. But sending the meter out of your facility takes time, costs money, and causes process, causes process downtime. You need to empty the pipe, remove the meter, package, and ship it out, wait for the verification to be complete, pay for the verification, receive the meter back, reinstall it, and then restart your process. You know, really portable ultrasonic flow meters are an excellent alternative. You know, it's an independent flow measurement that can be installed quickly to validate if the permanent meter is measured correctly or if your process flow is truly different than your expectations. So, you know, again, we talk about why portable flow measurements. You know, portable ultrasonic flow meters can be installed within minutes to the outside of the pipe without interruption to the process. Portable meters are battery powered for temporary measurements for anywhere from you know eight hours to one day, or line power can be used to provide for longer term measurements. Data logging is available for most ultrasonic flow meters to capture the data that's been collected, you know, for current or future analysis. Portable meters can be installed on a variety of pipes from anywhere from a half inch to over 200 inch pipes with the same base electronics with just different frequency transducers. Today's portable flow meters not only handle ambient temperature applications, but can handle extreme flow rates, temperatures, and pressures as well. You know, for example, our standard transducer can handle up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, with the option of extreme temperature transducers that can handle all the way up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, the key advantage of owning a portable flow meter is that it will not only help you solve the problem today, but it can help you for troubleshooting in the future and, you know, for future preventive maintenance actions activities as well. Beyond troubleshooting, portable ultrasonic flow meters are used for flow surveys to provide guidance for future expansion projects or sizing alternative flow meters in the future. Now, basically, a portable flow meter should be a tool in your toolbox, like a hammer, screwdriver, or a digital voltmeter. Now, you know, it, kind of the, 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 the crux of the webinar is, you know, is there too much pain with your installation when you, put, when you try to use a portable ultrasonic flow mirror? You know, it, it, you, know you, you look at it, and, and I agree in the past, most of the portable ultrasonic flow meters were difficult to use. With a single or dual line display, you know, it, it's, you know, difficult, you know, when it comes down to the measurement of, you know, it, it's difficult to figure out, you know, how to program, it's difficult to correctly install the transducers onto the pipe. Um, it, it's too difficult to determine if you have a good flow measurement or not. 
you know, I, I, I see your reading, but I'm not sure if it's correct, especially if I don't know if I programmed the meter correctly and if I installed the transducers correctly. And it's difficult to log data and, you know, in the meter and then try to retrieve it. Some things it's difficult to do. It's too difficult to install the meter due to the pipe location. You know, it's never it's not on the ground all the time. You know, it's, it's stuff up in a pipe rack. What do I do? Finally, after I, I feel confident and I know what I'm doing, I have to really learn how to use the meter again, since maybe I only use it a couple times a year. You know, these are common questions that come up when we start using a portable ultrasonic flow meter. You know, however, most of these have been resolved you know, with the, our new Transport PT900 ultrasonic flow meter. First one, you know, too, dif too difficult to program. You know, it's the first comment when it comes to portable flow meters. And I, get, I agree that most portable ultrasonic flow meters are difficult to program. You know, most have a single or dual line, dis dual, two line display. You know, it's difficult to understand the menu structure on how to program the meter and how to display the parameters and values that you want. Typically, you must pull out the manual with the programming tree or have a separate cheat sheet to help you program the meter. And now it feels like programming your scientific calculator back in high school. It's possible, but very difficult to do. For example, for installing the transducers, transducer spacing or the distance between the transducers must be calculated from the meter with programmed information. To determine the transducer spacing, you know, you must enter the pipe, fluid, and process parameters into the meter. With a single or dual line display, the selection will take a significant amount of time and effort to understand. Now, the, P the Transport PT900 has solved this problem. It uses an intuitive, icon-driven application which makes the final flow measurement easy to achieve. The Transport PT900 application is an industrial design user interface that is installed on either a tablet or a phone. With the application, it is a colorful and graphical driven, uh, you know, really aided to, aided to use the, how to use the application with using today's available technology. The menu structure is extremely simple from connecting the meter, getting to the main menu, programming, measuring, and data logging. The application is set up for, with easy decisions, um, making it very easy for basic users to achieve a flow measurement while having the advanced functionalities for engineering use. Most importantly, the application and touchscreen device takes advantage of its natural advantages of clicking, swiping, and, down, and drop down screens, making the application extremely, extremely easy to use and operate, and keeping you pretty much at the top level of the menu tray. Transducers are too difficult to install. You know, is it's an is next. You know, the clamp fixture which holds the transducers onto the pipe is way too complex. You, you can't figure out how to put the transducers into the fixture. You feel like you need three hands to install with special tools to make sure the fixture is installed securely. The transducers are on the pipe, but you're not sure if they are in the correct location or spaced correctly. You know, in the end, you know you you get frustrated since you don't know if the transducers are installed correctly and you don't trust the flow measurement altogether. It feels like you're working with a jigsaw puzzle to you. Well, the Transport PT900 has solved this problem. It starts with the chain and chain screw mechanism, which makes it extremely easy to install the clamp fixture onto the pipe. For spacing, one yoke is always set at the zero position, while the other yoke is moved to the recommended transducer spacing with clear arrows marking the location. The transducer spacing is adjustable without chain removal. So again, you don't have to, you know, be strapped to take it off, or strap it back on. It's all done, and all can be changed without having to remove the chain. The transducers with coupling easily installed into the yoke and snap in so they can be installed either before or after the clamp fixture is installed onto the pipe. Finally, the transducers are easily installed onto the pipe with the spring and lever assembly. This clamping fixture solves all the complexities of a transducer installation while still being surprisingly lightweight for installation in difficult locations. The next one is trust. You know, which flow meter do I trust and why should I trust the portable uh, meter is the next problem. How do I know if your portable meter is reading correctly? 
The portable flow meter is giving you a flow measurement, but, it, but it's different than the existing meter. I may not trust the meter, but why should I trust yours? You know, again, these are kind of some of the example. I have meter A and meter B. They're reading differently. They could be matching what you think with what the what's going through the pipe, or they could be three different measurements altogether. You know, why should you trust the, the transport PT900? Uh, well, the transport PT900, you know, will provide the flow measurement, obviously. However, before it provides a flow measurement, the diagnostics must pass internal checks first. Two common diagnostics that are used, you know, really for verification is what's referred to as signal strength or signal to noise ratio and sound speed. Signal strength or signal to noise ratio is used to validate that the signal sent from one transducer to the other is significant and not just random noise. Now, for example, if you don't install the transducer on the pipe, or if you install the transducer in a wrong location, you'll get a, a signal strength error. The meter provides this information clearly in the application as shown on the screen here. The other diagnostic is sound speed, which is the distance traveled per unit of time through a specific media. Therefore, sound speed is a function of both the media and the temperature of the media itself. Now, if the signal is not within an acceptable threshold of the media, the, the measurement will be rejected. So these are just kind of two examples of how the PT900 not just provides the flow measurement, but even before it provides the flow measurement, it does internal checks and balances to make sure that if, when it provides the measurement, it's providing a quality flow measurement as well. And also, it kind of from the screen here, this is a basic display. There's a separate diagnostic screen menu as well, which shows all the diagnostics. Next, data logging and data retrieval. You know, you, you're using a flow measurement. You want to not just say yes, you validate it, but you want to actually retrieve it for future use. You know, and a lot of times in existing instrumentation, it's just too difficult to figure out how to get the data. Uh, and then when I finally get the data that I want, I figure out how to data log, it's impossible to get the data log out of the flow meter. You know, you, you need to use, you, you want the data, you know, for reporting and to show your team, but sending a log, you know, something that's just too complicated. In the end, you just want that data. And you should never have to use really special software to get it out, you know, and just why. You know, we just want the data. So instead of having these complicated adapters, you know, going to a separate data logging device, connecting to a PC, it's just too complicated. The transport PT900 solves this problem. You know, logging data is, is a simple selection, you know, off of the main menu. You know, simply enter a log name, type of log, channel, logging interval, along with a start and stop time typically, and you are done. The log is running in the meter and you can walk away while the meter is data logging the information. And you know, once the log is, is done, all you have to do is simply connect the USB cable from the PT900 to your PC. The PT900 transmitter acts like a jump drive and you simply drag and drop the file from the log file onto your PC and you are done. Simple and easy. Another one is the location. You know, it's difficult to install it to the pipe location. You know, your current meter, you know, you know, is in a heavy suitcase that's hard to, to bring up ladders and stairs. The installation is in a difficult location, which makes it hard to install with, you know, multiple fixture parts. The pipe might not be ambient temperature, it might be really hot, you know, say it's in you know, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And, you know, and you don't want to really be close to that location. Uh, we understand that, you know, there's, you know, locations that you're installing is not going to be in a, you know, nice, you know, comfortable air conditioned room in a laboratory. And the ideal conditions for installing the meter is not always there. So the really transport PT900 takes that in consideration and really helps solve some of those problems. First, the PT900 system is available in a light carrying case, which is very transportable to your location. It is designed to be carried out into the field, you know, no matter where it is. So obviously it's, it's, a light, it's a light bag, it can be pulled over your shoulder, you can use to climb ladders, it's very transportable. Next, the crane fixture itself has the ability to pre-install the transducers with coupling and set the spacing to minimize the installation time and even exposure to the high temperatures. So at that point, you don't have to fool around with multiple parts or pieces, it's all one, one component, self-contained, straps onto the plate very quickly, so minimizing your overall exposure or installation time. So, for example, if you're, you know, not all applications are going to on the ground. So you're on, on a ladder 
or in scalping. Scalping to make that measurement. Minimize your, your amount of time required in order to install the clamp fixture onto the pipe. Last, you know, you know, especially if it's high temperature, what really leaving at your hands is the, the tablet capability. It is a wireless communication using Bluetooth going from the transmitter to the tablet. So it minimizes your exposure to the application. You can be in a more comfortable location and I've heard stories of people being, you know, under, you know, when it's raining outside, for example, being in their truck where they can see the measurements while they're in a nice location. So that might take consideration of you installing the, 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 the portable device in your application. The last point, the last pain point is the next use. You know, sure, you know, come, you know, we've gotten some, some instructions that you trained me how to use it, but I'm not sure I can do it again. You know, you don't have time to read the full manual again. You know, you, you know, what happens if you have questions going forward? Well, the advantage of the Transport PD-99 has solved that. You know, beyond just being overall very, you know, user friendly, we have instructional videos available. You know, at any point within the PT-99 application, you can go to the help, help section to, at any time and watch the instructional videos before or during the installation. You know, these same videos are available, you know, on our website or on YouTube as well. So again, if you want to see the installation of, you know, step-by-step -step on how you program it, how you install the fixture, how you install the frame fixture, how to, doubt, how to data log, that type of information is all available on the app, on the website, and on YouTube. So it reduces the risk of having to relearn and how to use the PT-900 in the future. So again, at this point, let's kind of transition through it with the value of clamp-on. You know, it's the advantage of a clamp-on measurement. You know, clamp-on, you know, meters have even more advantage to offer flow meter users. You know, they can be installed on either new locations or existing pipes, which makes them very convenient to install at any time for other technologies while not having to really shut down your process at all. You now, clamp-on meters are installed on the outside of the pipe and do not require extra welding or additional parts. Therefore, the total cost of time and money or of installation of clamp-on meter is very affordable. Clamp-on meters are commonly used for applications in which leakage is a concern, you know, since there's no pipe penetration. So, say a pharmaceutical or a semiconductor application, or maybe a corrosive chemical, as an example. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to use special piping or special materials. You can be clamped onto the outside of the pipe. Last, no required maintenance is needed with a clamp-on meter, especially with the use of a solid coupling that are available today. So again, there's no comment. If you have permanent insulation, you use like a solid coupling. Um, typically for portable, you are going to use a liquid coupling because it's a temporary measurement. And then some other, you know, ultrasonic advantages include obviously no periodic calibration requirements because the meter does not have any mechanical wear and tear. You know, it does not obstruct or cause obstruction restriction in the pipe, waste in energy, or location where debris can collect and possibly damage the meter. And then last, you know, for bidirectional measurements as well. Um, we've seen applications where people have used a portable device, you know, to validate a measurement for, for a totalizing batch, and not really that, realizing that there was some backflow, which is causing some issues in the measurement. So these are all natural advantages of a clamp-on ultrasonic flow meter. And then lastly, just uh, two brief case studies. You know, the first is, you know, one, you know, one example was a manufacturing plant that needed an accurate energy efficiency assessment for the amount of water being used. You know, no existing measurement of where the water that they were using um, had been established in the plant. They had an overall amount of water being used, but no idea where it was being used and how, how it was being used. And the pipe sizes were anywhere from a half inch to 24 inches in this specific situation. You know, a portable flow meter was able to baseline the overall water usage. You know, in, in, in general, you know, they, they took the meter from location to location to kind of baseline how, how much water each, each location in the manufacturing plant was using the water and, and really to, to kind of baseline, you know, what, what was there and how they're being used. You know, obviously in this situation, you know, it solved their problems, you know, before they could make any improvements or adjustments um, to, their, to their process and their facility, they had to measure first. You know, this same example, you know, we use the portable device in, in many locations and not, and not just in manufacturing, but in many industries as well. And the other location, another example is from an oil company. Um, it was actually ha ha operating in the Sahara Desert, you know, a little bit warmer than it is here today. 
The application was for gas injection into an oil field well to maintain a constant well head pressure for oil production. In this situation, there was both orifice plates and firmly installed ultrasonic flow meters, and they were measuring 20% off from each other. You know, instrumentation engineers had to come up with a solution. Uh, and in this case, they used a portable gas clamp on meter to investigate the flow measurement issues and determined that both the orifice plates and permanent ultrasonic meters were measuring the actual volumetric measurement as intended. However, they deduced that the difference in the reasons why there aren't problems was could due to standardized volumetric uh, flow measurement. And it was caused by the incorrect application of compressibility since it was a high pressure natural gas. You know, the portable meter was able to solve the problem, customer's problem and provide confidence in the flow of measurement without interrupt, interrupting the process. So in this situation, again, you know, it, it was a kind of a use as a check meter to figure out, hey, you know, where, is, was there a problem, was there not a problem? And the technologies were actually both working correctly. But obviously you can kind of see here in this example, you know, just because it's working correctly, it could be as simple as how, you know, how you making a correction and how you finally using the measurement can be the problem. So a portable meter is a, is a good option then for keeping you from having a lot of headaches while saving you time and money. So at this point, um, Mike, uh, I will pass it back to you. And, uh, we All right, we'll, we'll uh, if there are any questions, please be sure to type them into the, uh, the tool that's built in to go to webinar. Uh, especially as we start to wrap up here, because we, we will want to get your uh, questions answered. Tom, thank you very much for your presentation. If anybody in the audience does have any specific application questions, please feel free to give us a call at 800-9-LESSMAN uh, or 800-953-7626. If you don't know your account manager, feel free to ask for me, and I'll make sure that you get taken care of. You can also reach me at MikeD at Lessman.com. If you do have an application that is a temporary install, uh, we do have rentals available through a company that we uh, also own, Rayco Rents. So if you would like to inquire about a rental, you can also do that through me, and I'll get you to the right resources. If you want to know more about the technologies we supply, please follow us on social media. Uh, Dan's blog is active and has lots of great tips. All of our webinars are posted both on our website and on our Lessman Instrument Co. YouTube channel. Uh, so this will be posted uh, for uh, later viewing if you've got somebody else in your organization that you think should see it. I still don't have any questions coming up, Tom, so you must have done a great job. Uh, <laughs> Good. Good to hear. At this point, since there are no further questions, uh, I think we can conclude the presentation. And again, if you think of a question after we have concluded, please just send me an email at mikeD at lessman.com and we'll make sure we get it answered. Tom, thank you very much. Great job. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everybody, right. for attending.